Let's harvest some things from the garden and make some dinner. It's been a crazy busy day. My mom's coming over, so we're going to take some garden goodies and make some pizza and also do a little bit of garden cleanup along the way. So I hope you come along. I'm going to be putting on my harvesting apron because I would be lost without this. I'm always losing my garden baskets. I tend to like pick something up and then I put it down and then I'm walking around stuffing things in my pockets. So this really helps me out. But all right, we're all set. All right, so I'm hoping that we'll be able to find some really good things to put on these pizzas. My mom is vegan, so hers is going to be a fully vegan pizza. And I know we have some artichokes in the front that I'm dying for her to try out. And we also have some mushrooms in our beds. But over here, we also have a bunch of garlic scapes coming in. So here they are. So if you've never had garlic scapes, excuse the ranunculus, it is a shoot that comes off in hard neck garlic. You can snap it off and you have this little curly bit. So this part will flower so you want to pull this out so the energy of the plant can go into creating a bigger bulb because if it would have flowered it would have just gone to making seed from the flower that you could then plant but it wouldn't be the true to the mother garlic that you planted i hope that kind of makes sense garlic is one of those funky varieties that you can plant a clove to get the same you plant the seed to try to get something new. So it's kind of how you get different varieties of garlic and other plants like that. But the garlic scape is really delicious. One of my favorite ways to make it is in a stir fry where you get the super high heat and you cut up the bits and it's almost like a garlicky green bean. It's super delicious, really tender. If I were to have it like this, it would be super pungent, very garlicky but also works as a great substitute for pesto. So let's see what else we can have here. Oh, here's another good bit. And here's another. In another couple weeks, maybe a month or so, we should be able to harvest these plants. One of the big things that I love doing, as you can see, there's a lot of flowers here. I love to plant flowers that generally get decimated by aphids with lots of alliums. So I have garlic, I have some shallots in between, and it looks really lush and abundant aphid free because I have so many alliums. It's a really fantastic way to get the most out of your small space and also, you know, beautiful flowers that you can take inside. I have just been letting these bloom. I've taken some cuttings, but I just love the meadow effect. So I've just been leaving it here. Let's see what else we can harvest. All right, so now let's move on to the front yard and see what we can find. And I haven't introduced myself yet. So hi, I'm Ali and welcome to the Curious Nook. We're a tiny but mighty food forest homestead here in the California coast that's paint, not drool or vomit or anything. <laughs> and I just wanted to welcome you. And we have so much growing here. We have over 15 fruit trees in our small 5,100 square foot lot. And we just have an abundance of fruits and vegetables and flowers and herbs and everything. So I hope you can join me every week when we're posting things. Now let's go see what we can find in the front yard. So my husband and I are a bit of a quirky team. We're big DIYers. We're always doing something. And we decided to create this space so there would be a lot for us to do. There would be a lot for our son to do. But also like we like to be able to get our hands dirty and see what we can do. So this is like a great way for us to kind of let our quirky selves like have what we want and also be able to explore things and like we're tied to this space so might as well make it good you know 
Oh yeah, and I should probably mention we're in a very busy corner lot. Now let's get some of these artichokes. So I'm bringing the camera in closer so you can see, but this is not an artichoke that you want to pick to eat. You see how the outer leaves here are coming off? That's an artichoke that's getting ready to flower. So for this one, you're just going to leave a bee, let it flower. This is how you actually are able to perennialize artichoke, is by having the flowers come out. What I'm more interested in, there will be tender, are some of these small side shoots. So we have a bunch here, and those would also be really great for pizza. Not this one, not that one. None of these, they're coming off and opening up, but we want all the other little ones. So one of the things I also like to carry in my apron are a good pair of pruners. And for these, you can really cut them at any length. So here's a really fun tidbit about artichokes. If you've ever noticed that a plant will have really big head and then smaller heads as it goes on, or at the grocery store, you see the bigger heads and then for some other things there's little heads. It's because artichokes actually produce varying sizes of heads in the same plant. So the first, the primary heads are going to be your really big artichokes. So a plant, depending on the variety of artichoke, they will produce about five to seven big heads. So it can vary between your three inches to five inches, depending on variety. Then comes the secondary heads. They're going to be smaller than the primary. And after that, you get the tertiary heads. And those are usually the ones that goes into your artichoke preserves that you see, like your marinated artichokes and those. Those are generally the tertiary heads because most people aren't going to go to a grocery store and buy a bunch of tiny artichokes. So they go into preserves. I hope that makes sense. All right, now that we've picked some artichokes, let's see what else we have that's available. Now we're going to go through more of our food forest here and through all of the trees that we have. Ooh. We have a bunch of peas that I actually do have to clear. All right, so welcome to the area of my garden that I like to call my goth garden because I grow everything that is dark here. So these peas that we've been growing, I'm not sure if I'm going to use them on a pizza, but I think I will make a salad or maybe like some kind of side dish with them. But regardless, I do have to pull them because it's been really hot in this area and I have tomatoes that I have to plant here that are going to be black tomatoes. And I'm so excited. I have about four or five different varieties going in here this year. I'm always so fascinated by the different types of vegetables that you can grow and how you can find things that you never before see at a grocery store or even farmers markets. That's one of the things that I love about gardening. I also garden a lot for my mental health. I love being able to go out into the garden, pick something, cook with it, or even in the dead of winter, be able to pull something out of the pantry and just feel like I'm back in summertime. That's one of the things that I think is just truly delicious about gardening. You know what? I think I'm going to be pulling out these peas as they're going, because you can see some of these are chunky pods that are wanting to go into seed. So they're not going to be the best tasting. Taking out my handy shears. And as we pick the peas, we're going to be taking out the plants. Planting peas 
or other nitrogen crops where you're going to be planting tomatoes is a really great way to add nitrogen into your soil. Your, any of your legumes is really going to be helpful. So one of the things that I'm doing, oh no, I accidentally broke one of my snapdragons. That's kind of a bummer. I do have one that's in bloom behind me, but there's still part of a plant left. At least the thing with snapdragons is that you can cut them off and they can do the side shoot thing. It's one of those plants where they will come back, but I have so many pea plants in here. Trying to find some peas. My son and I were actually out here harvesting a bunch the other day that I made for stir fry. So I'm not sure how many more there's left, but we'll pick some and we'll definitely be able to enjoy them either as snacks later on in the week or here. So yeah, you want to plant things that will help your soil. So like with peas before tomatoes or beans before tomatoes, fava beans are actually one of the best things that you can plant before tomatoes. Especially if you don't let them go to seed and you cut them off and put them back into the soil. You can use it as a mulch or you can or you can just put it like mix it into the bed it's going to help your soil tremendously and the roots of the fava beans actually are really helpful for tomatoes it actually helps against a lot of rot and issues that tomatoes have also boosts a ton of soil health amazing plant and one of the things that I like to do when I cover crop with fava beans is I like to be able to take all of the blossoms and put them in salads. If you haven't had fava bean blossoms, highly recommend it. It's so amazing. They're really sweet, have like that bean taste, which is kind of funky for a flower, but they are just, really sweet like all the nectar from the flower is in there so you have like the bean taste it's fantastic in the salad if you haven't tried it highly highly recommend it all right now i'm seeing some space in here all right some more peas Actually, I'm gonna eat this one. This one's so good. This is a new to me variety. They're called Royal. I think they're like Royal Sugar Peas. I'll put the name out. So in case I get it wrong, but most purple things, peas, beans, and such, when you cook them, they turn colors and they go back to green. This one doesn't. I was so amazed by that when I was like making stir fry and it was, you know, high heat and they were getting cooked. Well, it wasn't turning colors. It blistered, which you can't really see because it's purple, but it was amazing. I love that. Right, that is cleared. Let's move on to the next one.
All right, so I've decided to make a nice spring bright salad of the peas that we collected. So I've gathered some herbs from the garden and then I'm just chopping up the peas. You can cut them up any way that you like them. And for the dressing, to make it nice and bright, I'm using some mint leaves from the garden as well as some of the garlic scapes that we had picked. And we're just gonna chop these up kind of fine. I actually had to switch up my knives because it was a poor choice of the little one. But then you're just going to mix everything together. So the mint and the garlic scapes, as well as some lemon zest. I'm using Meyer lemon here because that's the kind of tree that I have. But really any lemon works. If you don't like lemon, you can also use any kind of vinegar that you like. Balsamic works great or champagne. And then I'm just going to be using the juice of the lemon along with some olive oil to mix it together and then also chive blossoms are a fantastic addition to salads if you haven't used it before i highly recommend it it adds a nice oniony taste to it without being too overwhelming and the blossoms actually have a nice subtle sweetness to them that you don't have with anything else that's onion like and then the calendula petals are just they're bright and they're floral and they have like a subtle sweetness to them that is really lovely with the tartness of the lemon and then the minty and garlickiness from the scapes. I really hope that you enjoy this salad. I love it. It's one of my favorite things to make and I use this kind of dressing for so many different things. I really hope you like this one. So to prepare artichoke, it's really simple. You're going to want to peel off all of these outer layers. They're going to be a lot tougher. This one's a fairly young head, so you can see like right in here, that's still like kind of a succulent bit. So you could actually still eat that. You just scrape that off of your teeth after it's cooked. I'm just going to peel this off because we want to be able to eat all of the artichoke leaves in the pizza. I'm going to cut off the stem too so we can take off those end bits. We're also going to cut off this part. Depending on the variety of artichoke that you have, some of them might have spines on this, on the end there. So you want to do it, you want to cut it, and then you're going to cut it again in the middle to take out the choke. This part here is what you want to take out that really irritates the throat, especially if you eat it. So you want to clean that out well. This is the choke. This is going to be where all the seeds are forming in it. So this opens up like a flower. This part will bloom. And right down here is the heart. So you want to take out the choke. So those bristly fissile bits. This is one of the most tedious parts of the artichoke, but it's very much worth it, in my opinion. And if you do end up having some of those little bits, they're not bad for you. It's just going to irritate your throat when you eat it. So it's best to remove it fully. I usually like to take a small little teaspoon and just scrape it in. And you have to move relatively fast because artichoke oxidizes quite quickly. So you're always good to have some lemon on hand. And then you proceed to the next ones.
And if you didn't know, lemon does help prevent oxidation in fruits. So things like apples and the artichoke here and a bunch of other things that will turn brown once they are cut. If you just put some lemon on them, it will prevent the browning. And I am using Meyer lemons from my own tree that I have in the front yard. Now to clean the rust. So to cook the artichokes, we're actually going to be roasting them with some garlic scapes and some lemon juice. And we're going to roast it at 350 for 30 minutes. And one of the big things for doing artichokes is you can make them every which way. But I actually like roasting them a lot. I think it brings out the flavor the most. And it's super easy. You pretty much just do what I'm doing here and you can mix any kind of flavor that you like. I'm using the garlic scape because that's what we picked and I had the leftover lemon there. But really any flavors there works and then you can just cover them up with some foil and pop it in the oven and they will roast beautifully until they're nice and soft. And that's what you're looking for. But I've honestly made them before with just a light roasting and then throw it in a stir fry or put some like chili oil on it and it's fantastic and it's so easy to make so here they're nice and soft I'm gonna cool them down and then we're just going to be putting it over the pizza I'm using a basil pesto that I had made and frozen and it's just really easy to refall and put it on pizza crust that I had actually frozen as well it's some of the little things that makes a meal like this when you're super busy come together faster is just having those things frozen and then here I'm just putting together some mozzarella and then the artichokes and this ended up being such a fantastic pizza it just felt like spring and it was perfect for a warm day and it's just one of those things that was really fast and easy to make but had so much flavor and such a great punch to it. And for this, because the dough is already ready, I pretty much just put it in the oven so it would melt the cheese really quick because everything else was ready. And then just topped it with some olive oil and served it with a salad. And it was really fantastic. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see more garden to table videos like this. And you can also watch here uh, how to dry farm tomatoes. It's really interesting, should actually really help you out with saving water in your own garden. And I hope to see you next time. Let me know if you'd like to see more garden to table videos. Until then, plant what brings you joy.